You know guys, I've used the Z Fold 5 for 4 months now and I don't think Samsung told you the whole story. After all these 4 months of use, how durable do I find it today? Is the battery lasting me the whole day? How do I deal with this size in my pocket? Does the narrow cover screen bother me? How frequently am I able to use the bigger display inside? And how does it compare to the newer folding phones like the OnePlus Open? Look, Samsung can't answer these questions after 4 months, but I can. Let's go. And you know, one of the most important concerns with respect to a folding phone is its durability. You see, people have often complained about this happening to their older fold phones. But guys, honestly, even after all this while of constant opening and closing the Z Fold 5, this is as good as new. It shows no sign of any wear or tear. Now, of course, you can say that, hey, you've barely used it for four months. It's not like I've used it for 14 or 18 months. Yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and take a leap of faith because a, Samsung has been doing this for over four years now, and they claim that they've tested this for two lakh folds. So, yeah. Oh, and you know, they've significantly eliminated the gap, and it is something. I rarely find dust or pocket lint on the inside screen. And also, the Z Fold 5 is the only folding phone that will survive a complete drop in a pool of water because of its IPX8 rating. All right, now let's talk about the elephant in the room. And people really want to know the actual real life battery performance of the Z Fold 5. And well, even after these four months, I get somewhere between five and seven hours of screen on time, depending on how my day goes. And you know, my usage is quite common. I mean, I use similar apps as you would on an everyday basis. And you know, I would also have my phone connected to the Watch 6 all throughout the day. Location and always on display would be turned on as well. Brightness is always set to auto and the display is set to maximum refresh rate. So, you know, while Samsung says that they have 4,400 mAh of battery capacity on the Z Fold 5, which I admit is lesser than most phones today that have at least 5,000 mAh, but I'm here to testify that it easily lasts me through the day. I'm generally left with around 10% at about 9 p.m., but I do admit that I tend to charge it once through the day, just in case, you know, just to avoid any battery anxiety if in case I do have plans in the evening. But, you know, that is actually true for most phones today. Now, you know, most people have asked me, do I find this phone a bit too big and bulky? And if it's convenient for me to pocket or to use? See, first of all, understand that this is a thicker but a narrower phone. So compared to a normal phone, it actually takes up less space in the pocket. Instead, it bulges out a bit more. And second, because it's narrow, it actually causes a lot less fatigue while holding in the hand. But you know, this is really hard to explain because if you actually hold a, a broader phone for too long in your hand, you'll actually start to feel the fatigue. This one being narrower is just easier. You can just let your palm and fingers relax much more than you can with broader phones. And third, this is undeniably thicker than some newer folding phones out there. But I have to say that the grip is much better considering the uh, narrower footprint. And this brings me to the cover screen. See, the narrow overall form factor, it does mean that you get a narrower cover screen too. And unlike newer folding phones, which, you know, have a very normal phone-like cover screen, the Z Fold 5 can feel odd at first. But let me tell you why this is actually special. It actually makes one hand use possible on a folding phone. Since it's narrower, it's a lot easier to use with just one hand. Trying this on a folding phone with a regular screen size, it's super difficult. So it's really just a matter of, you know, preference now. Me, I just like the flexibility of a narrower cover screen. Though I will admit that reading can feel a little awkward on the narrow cover screen and content can feel squished, it can definitely take a few days to get used to. As I said, I actually prefer the flexibility of just using one hand to operate the cover screen, so I'm okay with it. But you know, the inside display actually makes up for it uh, when the cover screen is just not enough. And it's been a joy. It's so easy to see, you know, wide Excel sheets and move between those tabs, being able to review presentations and give feedback. And even when I'm not working and I'm, you know, let's say watching videos, I could just slide out a WhatsApp window, reply, and then continue watching. The task bar at the bottom makes it super quick uh, to move between apps. But here's something that Samsung didn't tell you. See, we all know that the Fold can be connected to the PC using nothing but just an HDMI cable to any monitor and can be used for, you know, an almost PC-like experience. But you know, you couldn't do that in 4K quality up until now. But now if you install GoodLock and then go into multi-star module, you can use DeX in 4K quality on 4K monitors. And lastly, there's been quite a bit of debate on the latest OnePlus Fold, the Open and the Z Fold 5. But there are things about Samsung that actually may make more sense for you. Hear me out. First of all, Samsung has a really rich ecosystem. If you've got a Samsung watch or a Samsung laptop or any Samsung smart appliance at home, they just blend together and work super well. 
Second, I love the fact that I have the option to easily get the S Pen and with this new slim S Pen case, it doesn't even add much bulk to the phone. Now you know the OnePlus Open, it is compatible with the Oppo Pen but <laughs> really good luck finding that anywhere. Third, I really think that the Z Fold 5 aesthetically looks more professional and minimal. The big camera bump on the Open, it just makes it look a bit awkward in my opinion. Next, Samsung also has a really large vapor chamber to keep the device cool so it can sustain peak performance for longer, especially during gaming. Also, if you were to go out in the market, you will see many more accessories and cases for the Z Fold 5 and not just the ones by Samsung. Even third-party companies make cases for Samsung. For example, this Kevlar case that I got from Banks. Absolutely amazing looking. And lastly, a small one, but when unfolded, I actually prefer the more rectangular aspect ratio of the Z Fold 5 over the more squarish aspect ratio of the OnePlus Open or even the Pixel Fold. It does leave quite a bit of letterboxing, especially when watching videos. Look, undeniably, the OnePlus Open is a fabulous folding phone. In fact, on paper, there are things that are just better than the Z Fold 5, like the screen brightness, camera specs, weight, and thickness. But from a practical standpoint, you know, like practical use, I really think the Z Fold 5 may still be the one to prefer. See guys, 2023 has seen the rise of many folding phones. Techno came out with their Phantom Fold, Pixel came with the Fold, and of course, you know, the OnePlus came out with the Open. So the real question is, is the Z Fold 5 still the best folding smartphone of 2023? See guys, Samsung has taken a lot of risks, right from bringing the first mainstream folding phone, which did suffer quite a lot of damage, received a lot of backlash, to all the way to the Z Fold 5. And they've been at the forefront of foldable innovation, so I'm ready to bet on their four years of experience with foldables than on any other foldable phone right now. And so given the software, the durability, the improvements over the Fold 4 and easy availability of the S Pen, it is very easy for me to say that the Z Fold 5 is still very much the best foldable of 2023. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys about the Z Fold 5. Uh, you know, 2024 is coming and if you guys are thinking of getting a foldable, sure, you may have questions, concerns, doubts. So put them in the comments section. I'll definitely help you guys out and I'll be very honest with my, you know, take on your question. So feel free to drop them below. And if you guys did enjoy watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon and mark all. It really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.